In 2016, the MCU welcomed its very own Spider-Man, portrayed by the Tom Holland. Over the years, Holland has brought the iconic character to life six times, and the web-slinging adventures continue with more films in the pipeline. In this exploration, we'll delve into the 10 ways Spider-Man and the MCU perfectly adapts from the comic series. Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man Marvel Comics fans know Peter Parker as the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. This nickname reflects his daily superhero activities, often focused on helping people in his neighborhood rather than battling major villains. The MCU emphasized this aspect in Spider-Man Homecoming, highlighting Peter's realization that his strength lies in being a friendly neighborhood. Spider-Man, akin to his comic book persona, after initially trying to emulate Tony Stark. Humor in the MCU, many heroes are known for their witty banter, but Spider-Man was the original wisecracker. His quick and humorous remarks were initially a tactic to distract villains. While Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man lacked humor and Andrew Garfield's quips could be borderline bullying, Tom Holland's Spider-Man captures this trait perfectly. His humor strikes a balance, feeling like it's lifted from the pages of a comic book. The classic suit, Spider-Man's costume is iconic, with its timeless red and blue design rarely altered causing fan outcry when it did change. The MCU's Spider-Man aligns more closely with the comics in appearance, but stands out with its high-tech features. After fans had mixed feelings about the Stark Tech suits, a remarkably accurate comic-inspired suit was unveiled at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home, leaving the tech-heavy suits behind. Peter Parker Bisses Spider-Man A defining aspect of Peter Parker's Spider-Man is the ongoing struggle between his everyday life and superhero persona. In the MCU, Tom Holland's younger Spider-Man faces this internal conflict more frequently than Maguire or Garfield. Holland's Spider-Man grapples with being a high schooler, constantly making tough choices like prioritizing heroism over social events and sacrificing personal time to save the world, highlighting the challenges of maintaining two separate lives. Relationship with Doctor Strange, Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, though different, share an intriguing relationship in the comics. They often team up for mind-bending adventures, as seen in Amazing Spider-Man number 500. Despite finding Spider-Man's playful traits annoying, Doctor Strange has a soft spot for the younger hero. In the MCU, Doctor Strange is one of Spider-Man's best friends, teaming up three times. Despite the age difference, their friendship is evident, with their bond tested in Spider-Man No Way Home. No one dies. Like many Silver Age superheroes, Spider-Man adheres to a strict no-kill policy. He not only avoids taking the lives of villains, but also ensures no one dies on his watch regardless of their earlier attempts to harm him. The MCU's Spider-Man shares this commitment, prioritizing preserving all lives, including supervillains. In No Way Home, the entire plot revolves around Spider-Man, trying to save the lives of five villains from alternate dimensions, even though he wasn't responsible for their deaths in their original timelines. Selflessness. Spider-Man is a hero not just because of his superpowers, but because of his selfless nature. Upholding the principle that great power comes with great responsibility, Peter Parker consistently prioritizes others over himself. Tom Holland's Spider-Man, despite initially having a privileged vibe, proves his selflessness in No Way Home. Mirroring the One More Day comic storyline, he makes the ultimate sacrifice by giving up everyone close to him to save the universe. If This Be My Destiny, The Amazing Spider-Man number 31 to 33 tells the story If This Be My Destiny, regarded as one of the best Spider-Man arcs. After a fight with Dr. Octopus, Spider-Man finds himself trapped under rubble in a filled underwater base. Overcoming fear and failure, he lifts the weight off, surviving to fight another day. Spider-Man Homecoming echoes this in its final act. Trapped under Vulture's hideout rubble, Peter, on the verge of giving up, declares he's Spider-Man and can still save the day. Mirroring the comics, he lifts the weight off and defeats the Vulture. Youth beneath the mask. Spider-Man is a teenager, navigating the challenges of doing what's right. Peter Parker's youthfulness is a crucial trait for the iconic superhero, who, despite dealing with heavy stories and mature themes, is just a high school kid. The Homecoming trilogy allows fans to delve into a high school-aged Peter Parker more deeply. Unlike previous versions that swiftly moved away from the high school setting, Tom Holland's Peter remains in school through his latest appearance. This extended focus lets filmmakers explore what it's like to be a student with superpowers, doing just justice to that phase of the character. Sudden adulthood, despite being just a kid, Peter Parker faced adulthood sooner than most after the tragic death of Uncle Ben. This thrust him into the daunting reality of becoming the family's man much earlier than expected, shouldering responsibilities that most children don't have to consider until much later. In Spider-Man No Way Home, by the film's end, Peter faces a parallel moment. After losing Aunt May and being forgotten by everyone, he must fend for himself, securing an apartment in New York City and working towards his GED. A high 
high school student only days before, Peter Parker suddenly transforms into a full-fledged adult, anticipating a life that is both exciting and terrifying. With Spider-Man now a staple in the MCU, fans can judge how he matches up to the comic version. Although Holland's portrayal has notable differences, it nails certain aspects perfectly. Thanks for watching, and as always, share your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. Stay tuned for more thrilling MCU discussions.